Has Rodney Terry done enough to be the Texas men's basketball coach in 2023? You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Longhorns, the show. Jonathan Davis, your host. Today's episode of Locked on Longhorns is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online, where the game starts. Jason Jordan, college basketball expert, joining me today to talk Texas men's basketball. And Jason, my first question for you is Texas is now seven and one since the dismissal of Chris Beard under Rodney Terry, with their latest win being a captivating 18 point comeback over the TCU Horn Frogs in the Moody Center. I think their biggest come back 18 points since 2013. So what have you seen from this Texas basketball team over the last month since Chris Beard's dismissal? Oh, man. Um, you know, I see a team that, you know, it could go one of two ways, right? So it could be like, oh, man, we're imploding, and I love Chris Beard, and I just can't get over it, and that's showing in my play. Or we can rally behind the new guy, who we all love, too, because we're a family. Um, he's probably had a hand in getting a lot of us here. Um, the, oftentimes they're closer to that guy, right? Um, because, you know, the assistant tends to be the sounding board and, you know, you can vent to him about the guy that's getting on your nerves, who's typically the head guy because he's the fall guy. Um, so it sounds like they're taking the ladder and really rallying behind him. It seems like they're taking on the us against the world min- mantra and um, it's working. Obviously, they're seven and one to your point. Uh, I still think Marcus Carr, Tyrese Hunter, and Sir Jabari Rice are, you know, the the greatest triple threat in the backcourt in the country. Um, And, uh, yeah, I I mean, it's impressive. I mean, Netflix should do a documentary on them at this point. (laughs) I mean, it's really good. Like, it's it's good. Like, this this is the kind of stuff I love about – what's the the documentary they have about uh, the basketball JUCO? Um, uh, last chance you last chance you this, this is great stuff and this is great tv 38 10 and 10 from that trio of backcourt i mean they've obviously stepped up cars averaging 21 a game since uh beard left i mean it they're they're definitely and then here's the thing they've already had some you know they gave up 116 to k-state i mean that was a horrible defensive effort right it was just monumentally historically horrible so they've had some – it's not all been good. That's my point is that we've seen a little a little adversity. We've seen some negative. And then they bounce back and they have a great defensive effort the next game, uh, holding uh, 46, I think, they gave up in the next game. So, you know, you're seeing that they're learning from things and obviously they're, they're, uh, they're on one accord and, you know, their chemistry seems to be improving. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's remarkable. Yeah, and you talked about that loss to Kansas State, but even in some of their wins, they didn't look great, right? You talked about the night it happened uh, against Rice going to overtime with Rice. Before uh, Chris Chris Beer's dismissal, they had not given up 70 points to a team that wasn't ranked, right? They gave up 70-plus points to Illinois, Gonzaga, and Creighton. But since then, Rice, uh, Louisiana Lafayette, and Texas A&M Commerce have all scored 70-plus on this Texas basketball team. So uh, the last two games have definitely showed resilience, and and like you said, it showed more of a rallying around Rodney Terry rather than a sulking and, oh, our season is over. Speaking of that, I'm not sure what your expectations of this Texas basketball team were coming into the season, but a lot of people, you know, kind of tempered their expectations when Chris Beard was fired. What are your expectations for this team now? Because they still are very talented and Obviously, Rodney Terry is 7-1 and one with them since he took over as the acting head coach. Yeah. So what are your expectations for this Texas team moving forward for the rest of the season? So I think the last time we talked, uh, we were talking about Final Four. And I, you know, I had to, I was on board with that. I felt like they were a Final Four contender for sure. So I think with Beard going out, especially the way he went, geez, Lord, um, the way he went out, it gives them an out, right? So it gives them a, hey, man, you know, we could just, you know, we could try, but if we don't do it, then we could just say it was because of coach and everybody would understand that, right? It makes sense. Like nobody's expecting nothing from you. Your head man's gone. T'Challa is dead. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, <laughs> Wakanda's open right for the picking, right? So um, it's they're not taking the bait. 
that's the thing. So it's like, hey, man, go ahead and lose a couple. You know, we good, right? So they're like, nah, 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 nah. We final four contenders. We we still on that. Yeah. And so because they're not taking the bait, I'm not changing. I'm not changing. You got to shit. And they will face adversity. They've already faced some. To your point, I'm glad that it's not been all peaches and cream. Like, they, I, I want to see the, the growth in these eight games and giving up, being bad defensively and looking miscues and you won't hear and the assignments off. And I want to fuss a little bit and let's be about to fight in the locker room a little bit because we both frustrated. Now we need that. That's all. This is what I'm saying. Netflix, I'm trying to get you this money. You know, go get the documentary started because this is great stuff. Um, especially because they're having success. But yeah, they're not taking the bait. So I'm not changing. I'm not budging either. And they will face adversity. We'll see more because I mean, it's, you know, the conference is murder is row. <laughs> so they, they're going to face adversity. It's going to be tough. But Obviously, they're t- the the mental part of the game is the most important part, and they are mentally tough. That is very clear. Yeah. So you're. I just want to get this on record. Jason okay. Jordan, college basketball expert, still has Final Four expectations for this Texas men's basketball Absolutely. team under Rodney Terry. Absolutely. They're seven and one. They've had some impressive wins. TC was a very much obviously an impressive win. So yeah, let's yeah, they're rallying behind them. Let's go seven and one. Let's go. All right. Quick word from Bet Online and our sponsors. And then we're going to talk about who could be the possible head coach for this Texas men's basketball team in 2023. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college ball season to basketball. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts so jason i want to ask you aside from rodney terry like you said he's seven and one and if he continues on this trajectory he has to get some consideration for being the long-term head coach for the texas men's basketball program but who are some other candidates the longhorns should be uh, eyeing to fill their head coaching vacancy at the end of the season yeah aside from rodney terry yeah it's tough to say i'll I'll say um obviously you because because we're in season, it's definitely going to be a holding pattern to get actual legs under these things. So it's all speculation at this point. But, you know, I've seen I've, all the names that we've all seen thrown out, like uh, Bruce Pearl. And that makes sense. You know, that makes sense. Nate Oates makes sense. Eric Muss makes sense. Um, one that I, John Calipari, I never I don't really understand that. Like, I, I guess people just be wanting to put Kentucky in, in their SEO. I, guess. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he's not going to. Like, it's not happening. It's not happening. Um, but one I thought about was Royal Ivy because you know he's up at the Nets and no, he does you know, but he's 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 fam, you know, like he's family. Uh, obviously a great player there at Texas. I, I remember watching Royal Ivy play. I, I loved Royal Ivy when he was there at Texas, and he's you no, know, uh, he's at the pro level um, with the Nets, and you know people are like, well, he doesn't have any head coaching experience. Well, neither did John Shire. He's a Duke. Uh, neither did um, I think I had more head coaching experience than Hubert Davis when I coached my kids little league <laughs> recreational team. He didn't. He was a head coach. You know what I'm saying? You, you but he went to the national title game last year. So, um, you know, I think it's all about um, relatability. And obviously, Royal knows the game. I, I would love to see him, you know, get in the office and sit down for an interview. But let's be clear now. Rodney Terry, if you ever been in an interview and. Like midway through the interview, you're like, yo, I'm killing this. That yo, they love me and they laugh. Like, I mean, the vibes, the vibes. Rodney Terry is killing the interview right now. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Now he gets to the second week in March. Let him get to that second weekend. We're not talking about no more candidates. We yeah, so, no more candidates. So I had uh Josh Neighbors from Locked On Big 12 had brought me on to talk Chris Beard, and he had asked me, and so a good question I want to ask it to you now. Okay. He asked me, what does Rodney Terry have to do this year to keep yeah. his job? I said Elite Eight is the floor for Rodney yeah. Terry to keep this job. I think they have to at least get to the Elite Eight for they for them to even consider Rodney Terry to be the head coach next year. What do you think is the floor for Rodney Terry to be considered as the head coach in 2023? I would say Sweet 16. I would say mm, Sweet 16 okay. and, and, and a competitive Sweet 16 game. Like, oh, man, we missed it. Or, you know, you know, it was just a, like a March Madness rush of a game, but they lost. He definitely has to get to the second weekend. Now, he gets to the second weekend um, and just like they just look horrible. on like, why are y'all on, the, on TV? Who is this team? What, what are y'all doing? That's not going to bode well for him because, you know, people tend to remember how you finish, right? 
Um, so this seven and one won't mean anything if they lose by 30 in the sweet 16, <laughs> right? So um, yeah, I think sweet six to your point, the elite eight, he she he should he should like look for new houses and look for a 30-year mortgage. Like he's there. That's a fact, right? Um hopefully, even hopefully. Yeah, even they better. All right, Texas. <laughs> they better, um, you know, but even, you know, Sweet 16, I, that's impressive, man. Like, it, it, let's just remember that we got to, I hope people keep that in the forefront of, like, this should not be happening, people. Most teams pack it in and implode, and it speaks to Coach Terry, uh, you know, as the great rallier, you know, like the great, it's because of him, you know, and granted the players are responding, but. It starts at the head, and there's a reason he was named interim coach, and obviously it was the right move. Yeah, 18-point comeback against TCU definitely right. shows that they're bought into Rodney Terry. I'll ask you, do you think that Rodney Terry could be a victim of his own success? And what I mean is, say they get to the Sweet 16 or the Elite 8, mm -hmm. and they're right there, right? Like, they they look like, oh, they could have advanced to the, the next round, and you know maybe it came down to a few plays at the end. Yeah. Do you think the Texas brass might say, hey, we got to the Sweet 16 or Elite 8 with Rodney Terry. If we bring in a Jay Wright or insert name here, we definitely can win a championship moving forward. Do you think that that could happen to Rodney Terry? No, I think that would be horrible PR-wise for Texas. I think that would be a really stupid thing to do um, <laughs> to not reward uh, family. Uh, you know, I mean, for, I, you know, he's family now. He's there. So to not reward him for his efforts would be, I think even the players would be like, what? You know, and I think they would, they would lose players because of that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you never know. It's the University of Texas. They might try to make the splash higher, but hopefully yeah. Ronnie Terry does enough for him to be the splash higher himself. Yeah, I'm going to get you out of here on this last question, Jason. We know that uh, before Chris Meir was dismissed, he had brought in two yeah. five-star recruits, two top 15 overall players in the country in the 2023 class in Ron Holland and A.J. Johnson. Now, as we record this podcast, they're both still committed to the University of Texas for next year. Mm -hmm. Nothing has changed in that regard. But how do you think this current coaching situation affects A.J. Johnson and Ron Holland's commitment to the University of Texas for next year? Yeah, um, so the good thing is that Rodney Terry had a hand in, uh, especially with Ron, getting both of them. So, that, that, you know, that's a, they, they're they probably closer to him. You know, like, I mean, uh, so that's good. In the recruiting world, you know, a top assistant is usually the guy, right? He's the point of contact. And, you know, obviously the coach takes over. I'm not saying Chris Beard didn't do it, you know, but there's a the deep, deep, close relationship with Rodney. Uh, so that's great. That bodes well. He's having success. That bodes well. They're all in a holding pattern right now. Like, so if if Rodney Terry were to implode in the rest of the season, they just they just tank it, right? That's not good. And that's probably not going to bode well for both of them if they keep both and they don't finish well. It looks like they're going to finish really well. I think winning helps. Right higher helps. So um, if you're winning with the guy that helped bring them in, Logic would say that they're going to be fine to keep those two studs, right? But, um, you know, to your point, to your last question, if they, you know, if they win and then they went, oh, man, we could really win, you know? Uh, I think that wouldn't work very well to keep their recruits because that, that, that doesn't look – it don't look good to me, right? So I know that's not going to look good to mama. I know the mamas. I know that's not going to look good to mama if they not – rewarding that man for um the success that he's having if that makes sense yeah like i said hopefully rodney terry can take this team to the sweet 16 or, or yeah. further Perfect. and we're not even having this conversation we just rewarding yeah. rodney terry for his hard work i know that this texas tech game tomorrow uh has lost a little bit of its luster i think texas tech still does not have a big 12 win yet and of course yeah. with chris beard being gone the the intensity of the rivalry that was building kind of took a big step back but hey texas we got to take care of home we got to take care of the moody center we got to beat the texas tech raiders tomorrow thank you for jason jordan coming on college basketball expert hook him and peace <laughs>